actors are required to do a, a lot of what are you talking about would it be pontificating if someone asks for a model number on an oven and you give them a phone number and the model number and this other number you thought what what are you talking about get the hang of this word okay thou shall not pontificate you there bro yeah only you can interpret what you said and understand what you meant. Yeah, so uh, uh, so we were live when Hatun was live, huh? That wasn't planned. I wasn't intending that. I don't. I don't like to go live when other brothers sisters go live. So was she live after me or before me? Okay, well, so yeah, that's not intentional. I don't mean to do that. What can I do? Yeah, I mean I don't know. It's like we don't. We're not in contact with each other, so we don't know who goes when. That's why I'm doing this now, so that. I'll be done before David Wood, Hater Wood, goes live. Hatun Tash of DCCI Ministries. But you're saying she was talking about death again? Guys, welcome. Let's wait for the regulars to show up. We'll begin. Yeah. She was discussing about death again? You watched it? Oh, man. Yeah, 5 of your time. Yeah. Uh, was she a little more specific? What did she say? I mean, I'm curious. Welcome, folks. We're waiting for the regulars. Yes, Lopez, they are. Let me go smash these kids for being outside playing in the courtyard because Lopez can hear them. Darn you, kids. Lopez, the kingdom belongs to such as these. Stop hating. My goodness. Man, dude. Anyway, folks, as I promised, I'm trying to do for now, this is not going to be forever. I'll try to do one session a day, God willing, or at least several times a week when things go back to normal. Right now, it's because people are stuck home, quarantined. There's nothing to do. I want to make the most of the time. So it's not just a blessing to you. I don't want you guys to think it's just a blessing to you. It's blessing me because it's being used by the Spirit to sharpen me, perfect me, sanctify me. And recalling scripture, teaching scripture, and then hopefully by the power of the Holy Spirit, live out scripture for the glory of Jesus. So it's not just a hope that I'm blessing you, you're blessing me. Because if you guys didn't come, I wouldn't be doing it. So I want to make most of the time just teaching the word, preaching the word, studying the word, and hopefully by the power of the Holy Spirit, living the word and just loving Jesus, loving our God, loving the Father, loving the Son, the Lord Jesus, loving the Holy Spirit, worshiping him, right? Because we don't do enough of that. But Pray. Some days, folks, some days it's a little harder. For some reason, today is a little harder for me, you know, because I'm, I'm seeing children, I'm hearing them, and I'm aching for my daughters, whom I have not kissed and held since June. I can only imagine what those parents feel that haven't been with their children for years. I know a person told me over 17 years they have not seen their child. Over 17 years. Wow. That is a death sentence. That's hell. Right? That is a death sentence. Turb, whether you believe it or not, every time you come here, you're getting an exposition of the books of the Bible. When I break down a particular chapter or verse, that's a biblical exposition. So like in the previous session, I broke down John 10, 27, and 33. That's exposition. I am now exegeting, interpreting, hopefully accurately, correctly by the power of the Holy Spirit, the meaning of that passage of that book. So you're getting it all the time. See, now Lopez, you see our brother Lopez, 18 years without seeing his child. That's a death sentence for parents. Death sentence for parents, right? Anyway. Yeah, hopefully. In Jesus' name, Yahweh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I was just on a Roman Catholic channel. Someone I know, he's a Roman Catholic apologist, William Elbrecht. That's going on right now. William Elbrecht, I think you pronounce his name, Reason and Theology. They have a Muslim named Musharraf, I think, and they're throwing him curveballs. And I tried to have them call me in to get me in to ask him questions because the guy made some concessions that would have been wonderful to prove the truth of the Christian faith. He said, and here's the link, by the way, but guys, don't go there, obviously. Don't break my heart. He said, 
Oh yeah, Mary is absolutely sinless in Islam. Absolutely sinless. Absolutely sinless. He confirmed the sinlessness of Mary. I'm like, oh my goodness. What a wonderful opportunity for me to take that statement and bring it back to the glory of Jesus Christ and expose Muhammad. But, oh well, it is what it is. Yes, we'll talk about that as well. Hey, Magdalene, you made it. You're a couple minutes late. Don't do that. Again, because then you're going to break my heart. Don't break my heart. I don't know how that song. Is there a song like that? There we go. Yeah, pray my daughters. I ache for them. Overall, I'm very happy. I'm very content. I'm at peace. My soul is still because of Jesus giving me peace. He has quieted my soul to trust in him and com comfort from our Lord Jesus. And I'm healthier than I've ever been, but... I like one thing on earth, my daughters. That's it. If I have my daughters, uh, everything will be good. Yep. Anyway, we love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. And I pray we don't just love you with our words. I pray for the filling of the Spirit, to be clothed with the Spirit, to be anointed by the Spirit, to love you by our actions, to love you by our deeds to love you by our life, to love you by our service, to obey your word by the power of the Spirit, to show you we love you, Father, even though you know our hearts, to show you, Lord Jesus, we love you, to show you, Holy Spirit, that we love you, and we're not just hearers. I'm not a hearer. Save us from our flesh, Abba. Father, save us from our flesh. Save us from the fruits of the flesh. Lord Jesus, purify us and cleanse us of our flesh, Lord Jesus. Keep us pure. Keep us pure spiritually mentally even our mental thoughts emotionally physically please lord jesus i know lord it's hard for many of us who are not married who desire a godly companion and sometimes may burn but please lord jesus what i ask so that we don't shame you dishonor you by the power of the holy spirit keep every one of us who are not married pure physically and sexually lord jesus by the power of the holy spirit remind those who are listening and give us the grace to take it to heart and act upon it that we do not engage in physical intimacy with the opposite sex until marriage. And Lord Jesus, if anyone's here that's listening to this and may be claiming to be a Christian, but they are in a relationship with the opposite sex, a physical sexual relationship, may the Holy Spirit be a fire in their hearts, consuming them, convicting them until they repent and stop. There is no excuse, Lord Jesus, for us to do that. And always give me the grace to speak your word with integrity, speak it with passion, and never water it down to tickle ears, Lord Jesus, but to speak your word as you want it to be spoken for your glory, even if it convicts me and exposes me and shames me as a hypocrite. Your word is truth, and we're subject to your word. Your word is not subject to us. And Holy Spirit, fill us. If there's any sin that we need to repent of. Give us the power to crucify our flesh, overcome that sin, and walk in holiness and righteousness and purity, purity to be a light for the glory of Jesus Christ so people see the difference between someone who knows Jesus and someone who doesn't. And Holy Spirit, bless this session as you did the previous session. Fill my chest, my lungs, and throat with health, with your, with, with your <clears throat> life-giving breath. Holy Spirit, you are the breath of life. And give us holiness to delight the heart of Jesus and save me from stammering and confusion. And bless everyone with understanding, Holy Spirit, because only you can illuminate us to understand these things and give us, own us for your glory, Holy Spirit, and make us more like Jesus. And please own our loved ones, own my daughter, daughters, possess them and sanctify them for the glory of Jesus. And bless the connection and bring them, Holy Spirit, bring them, bring them and purify my heart, not to do it for the praise of man but for the glory of Jesus. We need you. We need you to teach. We need you to preach. We need you to live the word, love the word, proclaim the word, and model the word to become more like Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Yehovah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Yehovah Rapha, Yehovah Shalom, Yehovah Nisi, Yehovah Yira. Thank you, in Jesus' name, now the Father, Son, and Spirit. Thank you, in Jesus' almighty name, Father, Son, and Spirit. Thank you, in Jesus' almighty name, ha, Father, Son, and Spirit. Thank you, thank you, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Father, Son, and Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, Son, and Spirit. Yahovah Nisi, Yahovah Shalom, Yahovah Yira. Please, Lord, 
bless the connection in Jesus name. You know, the awesome spirit. Like I said, it takes a few minutes for the modem to warm up and stop, stop buffering. I just felt compelled. I pray it's from the spirit because if it's from the spirit, then I'll honor the Lord. I'll be used of the Lord in someone's life. I felt compelled just to hammer this point. And I say this because, look, we have some handsome men and beautiful women of faith who love Jesus Christ. And I know the temptation will be strong because unless you're given the gift of celibacy, you desire companionship. But let me just encourage you, and I just feel compelled to say this, and I pray that we will all then live this out. Let me encourage you in Jesus' name. Do not touch any person in a physical, intimate ma manner until you're married. Because I want to say this. If you touch someone in sexual intimacy and you're not married, you are fornicating. That's sexually immoral. It's a sexual immoral sin. Repent of it for the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Louisa. I just want to say that reminder because I know that is going to be a burden and a cross for many. As I see some of the brothers and sisters, handsome men of the Lord, beautiful women of faith, but you use your beauty, you use your body for the glory of Jesus. You use your body to honor Jesus, not to defile it. <clears throat> Dishonor the Lord and make Satan happy. Remember that, all right? And John, Johnny Torch, don't rush it. Johnny Torch, God gave me enough signs. I rushed it. And now I am suffering because I have not seen my daughter since June. Lord, please, Lord. Sorry, guys. Like I said, the buffering, it's going to go away. In Jesus' name, it's going to be okay. I am not heartbroken for myself. That's Muhammad out there. If you're hearing the dog bark, that's Muhammad. Uh, my apologies to dogs. They're cleaner than Muhammad. I am not heartbroken for myself. I'm heartbroken for my daughters. I love and ache for them because they need a Baba to be there, and I'm not there. So I have to trust Jesus loves them more than I can imagine. He'll protect them. So because I didn't listen to the Lord, I went ahead of the Lord, married the one I shouldn't have married. He gave me two beautiful angels, but now, look, they're suffering. And that's my pain. Me, I'm all right. I just, um, I just want them. But in, I, I know the Lord is good. The Lord is good, and he loves them. He'll protect them. Anyway, keep praying in Jesus' name that God will protect. And I'm not the only one. We just had our brother right here, Lopez. Pray for him and his wife. They're in ministry. Pray the Lord Jesus will bless them to be holy servants of Christ, husband and wife, man and woman of integrity, to be used of the Lord. He just said he hadn't seen his child in 18 years. Psh, wow. Woo. Anyway. Okay. With that said, guys, don't break my heart. Don't break my heart. We were up to 150 last session. We we're under up to 150 last session. We're down to 88. Come on now. I'm trying to fight hard to get it over 200. Please don't make me cry. <laughs> or I'll just stick with one session. I got to beat David Wood because he's boring and he gets about 1,000. But to his credit, he's been doing it for, what, almost 20 years. I, I just took this seriously for the last year and a half, right? And I want you guys to pray for the mods, Protestant first last. You don't know how much time and effort they put. In beatifying the YouTube channel and editing and putting up thumbnails, Protestant believer just downloaded a series of lectures I did for another YouTube channel, and he's going to upload it to my YouTube channel because he loves me for the sake of Jesus and wants to see my ministry prosper for the glory of Christ. And they don't get paid, and I torture the guy. Now notice, I'm going to praise him, and in a couple minutes, I'm going to shut him down, talking about him having Alzheimer's. See? Okay, so praise God for you. Don't forget, Lord willing. Tomorrow, God willing, I'm going to go live with John, what do you mean, McRae, on refuting the satanic lie of modalism, this blasphemous heresy that opposes the Trinity. And it says 5 p.m. my time, so it's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Exactly, Jesus saves. I don't want a 1,000 for fun. I want a 1,000 serious students. That's why I want it to be more. Okay. What do you mean? That's right. What do you mean? John McRae. So pray for that because we're going to demolish, destroy the objections of Marcus Rogers against the Trinity for the glory of the triune God. All right. So that said, folks, I'm going to do two things in this stream. We're going to shut it down before David Wood, Hater Wood, goes live. Uh, he's going to be live in about an hour, 15 minutes. What we're going to do is I'm going to continue discussing the Muslim Jesus Showing you how you can use the Quran to bring people to the true Jesus Christ. Now, you have to listen to the two previous sessions. 
This is now the third session on this topic. Is it the third one? I did four top uh, sessions, right? Man, I'm getting old. Yeah, this is the third session on the Muslim Jesus, if I remember. I did two sessions on Sunni Islamic beliefs critique. And the second part of that, I talked about Jesus, I believe. Then yesterday I did a second session, but I titled it differently. The Muslim Jesus and real Shahada. Right? And then, anyway, man, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, just listen to the previous sessions. I don't know. I forgot. Yeah, is that what I did? Anyway, go listen to them because I'm building on the foundation laid in the previous session. So, Lord willing, we're going to get a playlist where I'm going to take these videos where I'm teaching the same topic with similar themes and put them in a playlist. So pray for that too because I'm getting confused myself. Okay? I'm getting confused. Anyway, let's continue. I'm going to show you how to use the Quran to point to Jesus being God in the flesh, though the Quran seeks to contradict that. Okay? And then I'm going to open up for questions on my Skype channel. So don't be scared. You can call me on Skype, ask me questions, or even send me a question in text. And if God is pleased, if the Lord Jesus is pleased, tomorrow I'm going to do a session on John 17, 3 in response to the Jehovah's Witnesses, Lord willing. So invite people to listen to that. Tomorrow, God willing, I'm going to do John 17, 3. What does it mean for Jesus to say the Father is the only true God in response to the Jehovah Witness? And then I go live with John. What do you mean, McRae? And she just posted the link. Thank our sister Nada for that. Okay. John, what do you mean, McRae? Okay. Now, with that said, let's come back. Let's continue where I left off in yesterday's session. Let's continue where I left off in yesterday's session. In yesterday's session, I showed from the Quran that Jesus is called. Various <clears throat> titles are ascribed to him. He's given various names, all of which show that Jesus is more than a human prophet, that he's God in the flesh, even though that wasn't the intention of Muhammad. Let me repeat this again so I don't confuse you. And I hope everyone's here. Let's pray we get close to that 200 mark. Yes, Lord. And purify my motive not to do it for praise, <laughs> even though I need love. I really am. I'm one of those that really needs love and affirmation. Growing up, I always ached for the love and affirmation of my, my wonderful mother, who's now with Jesus. She's alive with Jesus. But she was one who didn't verbalize her love. You know how you talk about the five love languages? One of them is affirmation. That's my love language. I love to be affirmed. And unfortunately, the woman in my life, they, they were actually like men. They would always beat me down. Yeah? They beat me can, is there someone there who could just affirm me, say, Sam, I love you. You're such a handsome beast. You're an amazing Christian apologist. I love you. <laughs> All right, anyway. Okay. Okay, with that said, let's come back. So Andrew Martin says, Sam sh channel is shadow banned on YouTube. I have no idea what shadow ban means. But pray we can get that resolved because no one gets notifications when I go on. Yeah. Rational. Coming from a guy that doesn't really encourage me. I didn't say affirmation from a guy, a brother. Hey, brother, you're handsome. You know, you're so get off of me, man. Right. Okay. Anyway, with that said, the Quran posits a contradictory portrait of Jesus. Now, as I said in the previous sessions, the Muslim Jesus is a satanic counterfeit. He's not the real Jesus of history. He is a fake Jesus. Magdalene, be still my heart. Oh, hold on. See, Magdalene, see what you just said? Look at my heart. You make my heart skip a beat every time we meet. I don't know what to do. I'm so loving you. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, baby. Ooh. All right, anyway. <laughs> Come <here. laughs> I'm crazy. Be careful, Magdalene. You're going to make me pass out if you say that again. Whew. All right. Okay. Coming back to the issue. All right. Focus, Sam. Mellow. The Quran paints a contradictory picture of Jesus. The Jesus of the Quran is not the real Jesus. He's a satanic counterfeit. But as I've said in the previous sessions, as I said in the previous sessions, God is sovereign and that he can also take a book that is produced by Satan and use statements in that book to bring people to the true Jesus. So though I believe Muhammad was inspired by Satan, and I believe that Satan influenced Muhammad, 
to say things about G Jesus <clears throat> in order to create this counterfeit Jesus, this Islamic Isa, to get people to think that is the Jesus of history. Still, Muhammad affirmed enough things about the real Jesus, which he then adopted and made part of his Islamic Jesus, that God Almighty has been using to bring people to faith. So understand what I'm not saying. I'm not saying the Islamic Jesus is the real Jesus. He's not. But I'm saying that Muhammad adopted, adapted enough true things about the real Jesus in order to attribute it to his Islamic Jesus under influence of Satan to mislead people. But because God is sovereign over Muhammad and Satan, he now takes those statements and affirmations and brings people to the true Jesus of history, the Christ of the New Testament. In fact, I know of just one individual today. I know of an individual today that told me, a former Muslim that told me, you know what the Lord used to bring that person to saving faith in Christ? Guys, are you listening? I just spoke to that person today. The Lord Jesus shined his face on that person, preserved that person for his glory. You know what that person told me today? What the Lord used to bring that person to saving faith in Jesus as the God-man? The Quranic statement that Jesus is the word of Allah. And that's what I'm talking about today. Did you guys hear it? Let me repeat again. What did God use to bring this person to saving faith in Jesus Christ? This person read the Quran saying Jesus is the word of Allah. And the spirit used that to put a fire in that person's heart. And that person came to the true Jesus. That person now worships the Trinity, is in love with the God man, Jesus Christ, and has abandoned Islam. Okay? So this is my point. This is confirmation of what I'm saying. You understand? This is confirmation of what I'm saying. God can use the Book of Mormon. God can use the Quran. God can use the Vedas. God can use Greek mythology. He can use anything and everything that Satan has <clears throat> produced for the purpose of misleading people and destroying them. He can take that which Satan intends for evil and then sanctify it for good for the salvation of people. Believe me, God does that. So if you go back and listen to the two previous sessions, and then you go back into my archive, my YouTube channel, I have a session on Quranic Christology, what the Quran teaches about Christ. I promise you, if you use this material, understand this material, and disseminate it, you will see by the power of the Holy Spirit using your efforts to bring multitudes of Muslims to the true Jesus. Because these are arguments that have been refined in the battle, spiritually battle-tested arguments. Arguments we've used in the battle, spiritual battle, that God has refined and perfected that are indestructible for the glory of Jesus. Are you with me there? They are indestructible for the glory of Jesus. Now, why am I using military language? Why am I describing evangelism apologetics as destroying and decimating and, and annihilating? Because that's what Paul used. That's the language of Paul. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. In the scriptures, Jesus is king. It's on my YouTube channel, Shemunian. Go to my channel and the search engine. Type in Quran and Christ, and it pops up. And it's on my website too, Jesus is King. I have articles on this, but if you don't want to read, which you should, but it's on YouTube. Now, 2 Corinthians 10, verses, uh, verses 3 to 6. I don't know who's here. Is Protestant here or no? 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 6. Okay, guys, read with me. Guys, read with me. Read. For though we walk in the flesh, notice what the blessed Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, inspired <clears throat> To write these words states, pay attention, the, for though we walk in the flesh, because we are in the flesh body, this is our body, it's flesh, we do not wage warfare according to what we are in the flesh. We don't wage warfare with fleshly weapons. Our weapons are not physical. They're not guns and knives or bows and arrows or, or tanks. Pay attention. That's not our weapon. So what are our weapons? Okay, watch here. For the weapons of our warfare, warfare are not fleshly, but powerful by God for overturning strongly entrenched things. For we are overturning reasonings 
And every lofty thing we overturn, raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are bringing every thought into captivity to make it obedient to the Christ. And we are holding ourselves in readiness to inflict, notice the language of military. This is military language, language of a soldier. We are ready to inflict punishment for every disobedience, whoever disobeys Christ, as soon as your own obedience has been fully carried out. By the way, that's the Job Witness translation. Do you see the language? You see the language? The language is warfare. The language is military expedition. The language is soldiers in a battle. You are spiritual soldiers in a spiritual war, in a spiritual battle, representing a spiritual king. And your enemy is the kingdom of Satan. And God has given you spiritual weapons that are indestructible to destroy, overthrow, annihilate the kingdom of Satan, and set free his prisoners and then bring them into captivity to Jesus. No, because Protestant, remember Punisher Lee. Protestant suffers from Alzheimer's. He forgot this is not a session on Jehovah's Witnesses. It's about Islam. But he's still, still in that session that we did two hours ago. So that's what's happening. So remember when I said Punisher Lee? We have to love this brother. He's getting old. He doesn't get paid. He's a great blessing. He's doing great stuff. So we have to say, there, there, Protestant. It's okay. It's okay. Hush, little prod, don't say a word. Sammy's going to buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing, for some lass is going to buy you a diamond ring. There, there, Protestant. There, there. All right. Okay. Did everyone understand the military nature of Paul's words? Did everyone understand what Paul said? We demolish, we overturn, we overthrow, we annihilate, we inflict punishment. You are in a spiritual battle. You are spiritual soldiers fighting a spiritual war for your spiritual king. The difference is God has given you weapons that are indestructible for mass destruction, leaving the kingdom of Satan <clears throat> groveling before your feet if you know how to use the weapons that God has given you. Okay? That's why Christians have called the church on earth. That's why Christians have called the church on earth the church militant, meaning the church at war. And though the church in heaven, meaning those believers who've died in Christ, whose spirits enter Jesus' presence in heaven and their bodies return to the dust, that church is called the church triumphant. They've translated, they've transferred into the heavenly presence of Christ and they triumphed. Right now you are the church militant. When you enter into Christ's heavenly presence and graduate from earth to heaven until Jesus returns, you then become the church triumphant. You triumphed. But until you enter, you are not resting here. You are, you are at war here. Can I prove it to you? Let me show you from scripture when you rest. Exactly, 47, onward Christian soldier. That's the song, onward, Christian soldier. Exactly. Let me show you when you rest. Here is not rest time. Here is battle, military time. Let me show you. Revelation 14, verse 13. Revelation 14, verse 13. Exactly, Jonathan Simon. So let me give you biblical proof for what I'm saying. Revelation 14, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead. See, when you die, that's not a curse. That's a blessing if you die, which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Did you catch it when you rest? When I die in union with Jesus, in love with Jesus, worshiping Jesus, I am blessed and I enter into my everlasting peace. No more work from me. I have rested from my labors, but notice the implication. On earth, you are doing work. On earth, you are laboring and striving for the glory of Christ. Right? Now, let me give you something else that's just as amazing. 
Revelation 12, 9 to 11. Praise the Lord, Andrew. If they shadow ban me, then that's good. That means I'm doing great work by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me show you something else. Revelation 12, 9 to 11, folks, before we get in. A reminder. Guys, pay attention to these passages. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, guys, notice how we defeat Satan. How do I conquer Satan? How do I destroy his kingdom and defeat him? Watch. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. Now here's your victory. Here is how we defeat Satan, conquer Satan, and destroy his kingdom. Here is your victory. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Number one, you need to be washed and covered and shielded by the blood of Jesus. It's number one. By the word of their testimony. Number two, preaching the gospel. Testifying that Jesus is the Son of God. And the third crucial aspect of overcoming him. And they love not their lives unto the death. Did you, need, you see it? This is how I overcome Satan. I need the blood of Jesus, my shield, which Satan can never, never desecrate and overcome. Preaching the gospel that Jesus is God's son the King of glory, the Lord of glory, our only hope of salvation, and being willing to die for Christ. Now understand what Revelation 12, 11 is stating. These Christians who were martyred, who died, the world thought by killing them, they were defeating them. God says no. Their willingness to die showed that Satan couldn't even get them to shrink back and deny Christ, even with the threat of death, that even death did not make them deny Jesus. Even death wasn't powerful enough to make them deny Jesus. They looked at death and they laughed at death and saying, that's all you got? Slay me, because when you slay me, I live. You understand? So what is this passage saying? This passage is saying, pay attention here. This passage is saying, Satan will use the threat of death to get you to deny Jesus. You deny Jesus or I'll slit your throat. And here it says, those who are sealed by the Spirit, covered by the blood, says, go ahead, slit my throat because then I enter the presence of the Lamb. Your threat of death will not get me to deny Jesus. I overcome you and your death by the blood of the Lamb. And that's why from... Christ's perspective, the martyrs who die, they have given proof. Not even death could make us deny Jesus. Satan, we have defeated you. And you know where you see that beautifully illustrated? Beautifully illustrated? You want to see Revelation 12, 11? Beautifully illustrated? The martyrs, the Coptic martyrs that ISIS killed on that beach. Do you remember that? Do you guys remember them? When they lined up, those Coptic Christians, our brothers, and you could hear on the tape as they were about to behead them, Hallelujah! Bismi Yesu! They died uttering the glorious name of Jesus <clears throat> before they breathed their last. Catch it? See that? That's what Revelation 12, 11 is saying. That's what Revelation 12, 11 is saying. You prove to the world you have defeated Satan. You have conquered Satan. You have destroyed his kingdom because you have the blood of Jesus covering you. And you testified to Jesus and you died for his glory. Satan, not even your threat of death will make me deny my Lord. I am more than a conqueror because of the blood of the Lamb who loves me. Okay? You understand now, right? Okay, with that said, what was the point of this? Why did I mention this? You are in a spiritual battle on earth. You are in a spiritual battle on earth. This is not the time to take it easy, kick back, waste your life as you're being quarantined, watching movies all day playing video games all day, 
This is the time to be prayed up, more prayer, more fasting, more studying the word, more online <clears throat> communion until we can go back into physical buildings and gather together in buildings as a body of Christ to partake of the Lord's Supper. We do it here. You rest in heaven, not here. Not here, you don't rest and you lie down and just watch movies all day or play video games all day or on the phone all day. This is the time to be prayed up, praying, speaking to your God, telling him how, how much you love him and praising him. Let him speak to you, studying his word, meditating on his word, asking the spirit to give you the power now to live it and proclaiming it, fasting, singing, serving, feeding those who are hungry, visiting the sick, going to those in prison and showing them the love of Jesus, doing what Christ did on earth and Christ wants to continue to do through you, his body. Okay, so remember that. Why do you think I'm doing two sessions every day? Because you know why? I don't want free time. I want to use all my time serving Jesus by teaching, by studying, by writing, by worshiping him. Even though I do it imperfectly, may God have mercy on me. Okay. Okay, now, with that said, are we ready now? Are we ready now to go into the discussion? Julie, Julian, forget the coronavirus, man. Just, <laughs> uh, Julian, I'd kiss your head. I'd kiss you. Let's focus. Okay. okay, let's focus here. Coronavirus. You know it's a cure to coronavirus? They got a vaccine for coronavirus, guys. Let me see, then we can begin. You know what the vaccine is? You have coronavirus, but there is something that destroys coronavirus. It's called... Heineken situs. One bottle of Heineken destroys coronavirus. Heineken situs. Heineken situs. And when you pick up that Heineken, you say, Tekbir! Heineken! Tekbir! No corona! Tekbir! Budweiser! All right, anyway. You ready? See, even they're getting excited outside, the children. Like, oh, man, this guy's nuts. Even one guy told me, man, I, we can hear you screaming. He goes, what's going on? Who are you angry with? I said, I'm angry at the world. All right. Now with that said, let's come back. Let me repeat the story I heard today. And thou shall not pontificate. Can you confirm that? Can you confirm that that person used to be a Muslim? Stated that they came to Jesus Christ because of the Quran, calling Jesus the word of God, the word of Allah in the Quran. Thou shall not pontificate. He's a witness to this. So, you know, I'm not lying. Am I exaggerating? See? Yes. Amen. So he was there to hear the person's testimony. So let me show you how to use this for the glory of Jesus. Get Muslims to see the Quran agrees with something that shows Muhammad didn't know what he's talking about because he spoke out of both sides of his mouth, saying Jesus is just a man, but then saying things about Jesus to show he's more than a man. Chapter 4, verse 171. Chapter 4, verse 171. Okay. Chapter 4, verse 171. All yeah, right. O people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion. Utter aught concerning Allah, save the truth. In other words, talking to the Christians. It's saying, you Christians, stop lying, stop exaggerating, only speak the truth. Now you got to go to part one of this that I did yesterday for more details. Because I'm going to focus on what it says about Jesus being the word. <clears throat> Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger, apostle of Allah, and his word, which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from him. So believe on Allah and his messengers and say not three, sees it is better for you. Allah is only one Allah. Far is it removed from his transcendent majesty that he should have a son. His is all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. And Allah is sufficient as defender. Now, guys, let's unpack these two titles. Word of Allah and spirit from him. You see what Jason M is doing to me? He goes... Roger Gracie, the another marshal ever included. Him. See, Jason, he set me up right here. He just said, Hoist Gracie is better than Bruce Lee. And then he said, Jesus is Lord of Lord, King of Kings. So, right there, he put me in a place where I can't attack him for attacking Bruce Lee because he glorified Jesus Christ, my God, my Lord, my Savior. Good one, buddy. I like how you did that. A good one. Good one, man. You got me set up where I want to just 
go for the juggler for you saying that Gracie is better than Bruce Lee. But when you glorified my God and Savior Jesus Christ, I have to zip it. Zip. Because Bruce Lee was nothing but a maggot, a human maggot under the feet of Jesus. And because you glorified Christ, that's what matters. You shut me up. But if you ever do that again and you set me up like that, I'm going to visit you and I'm going to choke you out. Triangle choke cold, baby. All right, now. The Quran calls Jesus his word. Kalimatuhu. Kalimatuhu. His word. The Quran refers to Jesus as God's word in two other places. Chapter 3, verse 39. Man, idiota, I thought I had blocked you, man. Darn it, bro. Shh. Darn. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 39. Okay, what? read with me. Read, read, guys, read. Chapter 3, verse 39. And the angels called to him as he stood praying in the sanctuary. Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a son whose name is John, Yahya, who cometh to confirm a word from Allah, lordly chase a prophet of the righteous. Guys. Did you know that the Quran agrees with the Gospels? John the Baptist was sent as an envoy to prepare for the coming of Jesus. Did you guys know that? The Quran agrees John the Baptist was Jesus' emissary, sent ahead to prepare people for the coming of Jesus. Yeah, you read it. Chapter 3, verse 39. Chapter 3, verse 39. Post it one more time so they can see it for themselves. Here. And I'm going to give you the commentaries, what they say about it. And all of this is in my articles. But here, <clears throat> I'm going to give you the commentary. <clears throat> Chapter 3, verse 39. John, Yahya, was sent to confirm a word from Allah. A word from Allah. Here is the commentary of Jalalain. Tafsir al-Jalalain. Here you go. John was sent, Yahya, to confirm a word from Allah. Okay, now here's my question. What does it mean that John the Baptist, Yahya in Arabic, which is not his name, his name's not Yahya, but that's another story, was sent to confirm a word from Allah. Now here, don't take my word for it. That's the link. That's the English translation of the commentary of the two Jalals, Sunni Muslim scholars. Okay. Here is the part. Okay. Now, although they mistranslate it, that's fine. This Mishnah, the meeting, here, look what the two Jalal said. Of John, who shall confirm a word being from God, namely Jesus. John confirms that Jesus is a word from God, that he is God's spirit. So what is John going to tell people? Jesus is God's spirit. He is referred to as God's word because he was created through the word kun bi. That is the two Jalal's misinterpretation, but put that aside. Do you see that the Quran states, and the Muslim scholars confirm, John was sent to confirm Jesus being God's spirit and a word from God. Did you catch it? It's right there. Let me give you another commentary. All online for free. This is Tanwir al Mikbas min Tafsir ibn Abbas. This is a commentary attributed to ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas was Muhammad's first cousin, who is considered one of the greatest Muslim scholars who ever lived. Okay, now, what does he say? What does this verse mean? What does this verse mean? I'll get you the link in a minute. A son whose name is John, who cometh to confirm a word from Allah, Jesus, the son of Mary, that he will be a word from Allah created without a father. Did you guys catch it? Even this Muslim commentary attributed to Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's cousin, says, the word from God that John the Baptist confirms is Jesus. So part of John's mission is to testify to the people, Jesus is God's word and a spirit from God. He is God's spirit. Wow. Here's the link. Please save these links so you know I'm not making it up. What? Jesus is a word from God? The word of God and God's spirit? That's what Islam teaches? That's what the Quran teaches? Yes. And John the Baptist is Jesus' forerunner, sent to prepare people and announce to people, Isa, Jesus, is the word of Allah, God's word, and God's spirit? Wow. Look at how much information there is in the Quran for you to use to expose Muhammad and glorify Christ. Now let me get you another article that I wrote. 
because here there's a lot of hadiths. Hadiths in my articles that I want to show you. Because in Islamic tradition, in Islamic tradition, Jesus is given two names in Islamic tradition. He's got two names in Islamic tradition. Here it goes. Here's the link to my article. Guys, you need to click on this, save this, study it, and use it. It's not my fault if you don't use this information. The two names given to Jesus and no one else. The two names given to Jesus and nobody else. No one in Islamic tradition are given these two names. Are you ready? Kalimat Allah, Ruh Allah. Kalimat Allah, the word of Allah, Ruh Allah, the spirit of Allah. The only figure in Islamic tradition, Islamic theology, that is said to be the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah. Kalimat Allah, Ruh Allah. No one, not even Muhammad, are given these names. Did you know that? Here, let me give you some citations. Allah, Ruh Allah. Okay, here's this is from my article. Click on the link. Click on the link. Watch here. Ruh Allah, Spirit of God, a special title given by Prophet Muhammad to Jesus. You didn't catch it. Ah, let me post it again. Ruh Allah, Spirit of God, a special title given by Prophet Muhammad to Jesus. This is M.A. Kazi, a Muslim dictionary, concise dictionary of Islamic terms, page 57. <whistles> Who gave Jesus the name? Ruh Allah, Muhammad. Muhammad? Call Jesus Ruh Allah. Who calls Jesus Karimat Allah? Muhammad. Where did Muhammad get this from? Supposedly he got it from God. Wow. Did you guys catch it? All right. Let me give you some because now we're going to bring, bring out the implication of this. Here's a long hadith from Sahil Bukhari. Sahil Bukhari, the most authentic collection of narrations. It's too long for me to post. I'm just going to post the relevant parts. It's the last day, the day of judgment, and mankind's going to the prophets for help. So they go to Moses and say, Moses, help us. Moses, help us. Now watch this. Watch this. They will go to Isa and say, oh, Isa, Isa supposedly Jesus, you are the messenger of Allah, his word, which he cast to Miriam and a spirit from him. Okay. That's what they tell Jesus. That's who you are. Now, let me read the rest of the Hadith. It says that Jesus, watch this. Look what it says about him. Look what it says about Jesus. Watch here. This Hadith, it's in my article from Bukhari. And he did not mention a sin. According to that narration, he's the only one that had no sin. Did not mention a sin and had no sin. So notice, he's the only one from those prophets who's sinless. He's the only one said to be the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah. According to Sal Bukhari, a narration attributed to Muhammad. What's going on here, Muhammad? Muhammad, are you trying to convince me Jesus is just a man? You're doing a rotten job of it. Here's another narration. This comes from Jami at Tirmidhi. Jami at Tirmidhi. And in this hadith, it's talking about various prophets and their titles in relationship to Allah. Right? Ibrahim is Khalil Allah, the friend of Allah. Who's Jesus? This hadith, it's all in my article, folks. If you need the link again, let me know. This hadith is saying various prophets were given various names. Ibrahim was called Khalil Allah, the friend of Allah. All right. What was Jesus called? And Isa is the word of Allah and his spirit. So did you catch it? Ibrahim, friend of Allah. Musa, the one who spoke with Allah, right? The one who spoke with Allah. Isa, the word of Allah and his spirit. Wow. What's going on, man? Um, I'm like, what? What? You come on. You sure? So that's, I can give you a lot more, but I think I've made the case, right? I can give you a lot more, but go to my article and to the links that I post at the end of the article. All authentic sound sources of Islam. So do you see now 
that Islamic theology, Sunni theology, and even Shia, even the Shia, agree Jesus is Kalimat Allah, Ruh Allah, the Word of God, the Spirit of God. Do we get that? Is that clear? Okay. You got that point? So I can move on to the next point. Okay. 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 Now, let's bring out the implication of this. In chapter 4, verse 171, it says, Jesus is the word of Allah, kalimatuhu. And then the Arabic is clear. Now, you don't need to know the Arabic because English is good enough. It says, Al-Qaha illa Maryam. Arabic speakers will tell you what that means. And it's in your translation. Chapter 4, verse 171 says, Jesus is Allah's word that he cast down to Mary. Kalimatuhu al-Qaha. Cast down, sent down, illa Maryam. Guys, I said this yesterday, but I got to repeat it again. I said this yesterday, but I'm going to repeat it again. If I say Jesus is God's word that was cast down to Mary, doesn't that mean that Jesus didn't originate from the earth? He originates from God because he came down to Mary. If something comes down, that means originally it's up. It's like I use the analogy of my phone. A very bad analogy. But imagine I'm on top of the roof and you got first last. I go, hey, first last. Yeah. Here, I'm going to cast down my phone to you. You better catch it because if it breaks, I'm going to bust your face. Yeah, you bust your face. Okay. So this is the iPhone, Sam's iPhone that he cast down to first and the last. That means I'm up. The iPhone is with me. Up there before I cast it down to first and the last. Right? So if the Quran said Jesus is God's word that was cast down to Mary, that means Jesus didn't come from down here. He came down from up there where Allah is. He originates from Allah, came down from Allah to Mary. Okay? Everyone got that part? Everyone got that part? If you got that part, I have a follow-up question. Here's my follow-up question. Since Jesus only became flesh when he entered Mary, because that flesh body he took from Mary when he was born from her. So if Jesus only took flesh when he entered Mary's womb and came out from her while she was a virgin, which the Quran agrees, that means when he was up there, he couldn't be flesh, right? So before he came down, when he was up there, he couldn't be flesh, right? Because he only took flesh when he entered Mary and was born from her while she was a virgin, right? So that means he wasn't flesh when he was up there. So what would he have been? What would he have been? The Quran told you, the verse told you, a spirit from him. The Quran told you he came as a spirit from Allah. Wow, Muhammad, you agree completely with Christian theology. Jesus originally was spirit who existed with God at his word. And he came down as spirit to become flesh from Mary. Wow, Muhammad, you're confirming the prologue of John. The, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. You see that? Everyone got that or no? Okay, you got it, right? You see what Muhammad did and what Satan did. Muhammad thought, I'm going to affirm all these things about Jesus to get Christians to consider me. Even though I'm going to deny that he's God, but I'm going to affirm all these things. And then Satan thinks he's now smart. Yeah, Christians, he affirms all these things, so hear him out. And God, who is infinitely smarter, says, yes, yeah, Satan, have him affirm these have Muhammad say Jesus is the word of God, spirit from him. Because watch what I'm going to do with your satanic book. I'm going to use your book to bring glory to my son and Muslims to the feet of my son. You see how amazing Jesus is? You catch it, what the Lord did? Satan thought he's smart. God is infinitely smarter. Sure, Satan. Go ahead. Raise him up. Empower him. Tell him what to say about Jesus. Tell him what to... Because I'm almighty over you, 
You're nothing but a dog under the feet of Jesus. And we, the children of God, have victory over against you by the blood of Jesus covering us. Okay. So then he asked the Muslim the following, because now I'm going to unpack how to refute what they're going to say. They're going to come back and try to refute the implication of these words. Okay, here. Ask the Muslim the following question. Say, is the word of God, before you show him these verses, you say, is the word of God created or uncreated? They'll say it's uncreated. Is the word of God created or uncreated? They'll say it's uncreated. God's word is eternal. All right. Then he asks him, is Jesus called the word of God? Is one of the names of Jesus the word of God? They're going to have to say yes. Say, thank you for proving that Jesus is eternal and uncreated. What do you mean? Look, God's word is uncreated. Jesus is God's word. Therefore, Jesus is uncreated. But wait, Jesus is also flesh. That part is created. Oh, so you affirm the two natures of Christ. The word of God is uncreated. Jesus is the word of God. He is uncreated. But then he came to Mary, became flesh. So that physical part is created. Wow, Muslims, you just affirmed the two natures of Christ. And you know what's ironic? Here's what makes this all the more ironic. What makes this all the more ironic and shocking? Muslims are always attacking the Gospel of John, saying the Gospel of John is written later. It's less reliable historically and more theologically developed. Yet it's the Gospel of John that says Jesus is the Word of God that became flesh. And Muhammad confirmed John's Gospel. It is John who says Jesus is the Word who became flesh. And Muhammad took John's theology and said, yes, that's who Jesus is. The Word who became flesh. So why is Muhammad confirming, amening a gospel that you Muslims say is less reliable because it's later and more theologically embellished? You want me there? Don't let Julian distract you. Julian, focus. Genesis 17, 20. That's not relevant to the topic. Just focus. You with me there? So isn't this, you see, he who laughs last, laughs best. Isn't it amazing? It's like God is mocking Satan and his son Muhammad and making a fool out of Muhammad and his religion because Muhammad ended up affirming the very things that the Muslims say cannot be true because John comes later in time He's less reliable, historically reliable, and he tries to make Jesus more than he is. And yet the theology of Jesus that Muhammad confirms is John's theology. And by the way, folks, I don't know if you know this. Do you know God mocks people? God laughs and mocks people. He laughs and mocks his enemies and makes them look stupid. He berates them and belittles them. For their hatred of Jesus. Can I show you that? Can I show you from scripture? The Bible says if there's anyone. Anyone. Who opposes God and his Christ. God will mock them. Laugh at them. And shame them and humiliate them. You ready for the verses? So you know I'm not making it up. As Holy Spirit enables me to recall those passages. For the glory of Jesus. Psalm 2 verses 1 to 4. No not that cloudy. Cloudy get off your oars. <laughs> I know it. And it's not Elisha, Cloudy. It's Elijah in 1 Kings 18.27. Elijah in 1 Kings 18.27, not Elisha. Cloudy, you see every time you say something, I have to end up knocking you off your horse. <laughs> All right, Psalm 2, verses 1 to 4. Psalm 2, verses 1 to 4. Read, here you go. Why do the heathen rage? Why do the heathen rage? Get rid of Turkish Islam, please. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Why do the people imagine something vain, foolish? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers. Now, you know, my friend, Protestant, he's really lost it. He's gone. The guy's flipped. Not only is he quoting the King James, he's quoting it in the way that the English was written in the 17th century. Now, you tell me this guy's not lost it. He hasn't flipped. <laughs> do you see the version? Of the <laughs> The dude's flip, man. And you guys are telling me the guy's inside. He, he quotes 
not the King James written in modern English, but the way English was written back then, where the V looks like a U. Tell me the dude hasn't lost it, man. And the I is written as a Y. Okay, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Ah, the Hebrew word is Mashiach, against his Christ. So what does God say to those who want to oppose God and Christ? The Christ, we know is Jesus. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away. Let us break, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord will have them in derision. Did you catch it? it? What does it say God will do to those who say, you know what? We want to have nothing to do with God or Christ. We don't want their yoke upon us. We don't want them to rule over us. Let us rebel. And God laughs. And he makes them look stupid. <laughs> You actually think you can reject my Christ and oppose him and me and get away with it? <laughs> That's what you're seeing happening with Islam. Did you catch it? What will God do to those who refuse to submit to God and his Christ? Sub refuse to submit to the Christ of God, the Son of God, and worship him? God will mock them. God will shame them. Will laugh at them. What does God do to those who refuse to submit to him? What does God do to those who refuse to accept him as he is, accept Jesus as he is, and make Jesus into something he's not? Proverbs 1, 26. Proverbs 1, 26. Watch here. Exactly. I will also laugh at you. At your calamity. I will mock you when when you your fear cometh. But brothers, it's not Christ-like to mock people. I don't see Jesus in you. Would Jesus mock? You need to be more like Christ, Sam. But wait, here, the divine wisdom says, I will laugh when destruction comes upon you. I will mock when fear comes upon you. You're terrorized like what's happening here with the coronavirus. Let me tie it in with today. Here you guys are in a panic. The very people who told God we want to have nothing to do with you. The very people who put in legislation that goes against the Bible, that contradicts the Bible, that dishonors Jesus and seeks to dethrone Jesus. The very people that murder millions of unborn children and a little virus has brought terror and panic and an epidemic and the God of heaven laughs. Now what are you going to do? Where is your boasting? You didn't need me, right? You can do it on your own. You don't have nothing to do with me or my Christ. Now look at you. Right? Psalm 37, 12. Does God mock? And you see, that's what God is doing to Satan and Muhammad in the Quran. Psalm 37, 12. Watch here. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. So what does God do in verse 13? When the wicked... Uh, I want, and what does God do in Psalm 37, 13? Watch here. Psalm 37, 13. Watch here. Psalm 37, 13. The Lord shall laugh at him. The Lord shall laugh at him. For he seeth that his day is coming. So don't let anyone tell you that God doesn't mock, insult, ridicule, scoff at those who hate him and oppose him, defy him, and blaspheme his name day in and day out. You see that there, right there? The one who gnashed their teeth against God, God laughs. He's stupid. You, you think you can gnash your teeth against me and my Christ and my righteous slaves and get away with it? Man, you're stupid. <laughs> you fool. Watch what's going to happen to you on the day of destruction. Everyone got it or no? Did it sink in? 
So you learn two things. God does make fun, does insult, does scoff, does mock persistent, wicked, blasphemous dogs. And secondly, you see how God is making a mockery of Muhammad. God is taking the Quran and making a mockery, a fool out of Muhammad. You fool. You say all this about Jesus and still deny he's God. Watch what I'm going to do to you and your religion. Clear? We know God loves everyone. But when you persist in insulting God, blaspheming God, ridiculing God, day in and day, day out, in spite of all the grace and the mercy and love and compassion and blessing God gives you, then God says, all right, enough is enough. You've reached the point of no return. Now it's time for me to hand you over to desires your heart and mock you when calamity comes upon you because you refuse to submit to me. Okay? So without all that said, you see how God is making a mockery out of Islam, making Muhammad look like a fool and his religion look stupid. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it for yourselves? Everyone catching it, right? All right. If you're catching it, now let's go into how the Muslims will try to get around Jesus being the Word of God. Are you ready? Here's how they're going to get around Jesus being the Word of God according to the Quran. So let me prepare you to respond to that. I may have to do another short session on this because time is almost fleeting for Hater Wood to start his show where he speaks 90% of the time, allows his guests only 10% of the time to speak because it's all about him trying to get attention and bore people to death. Anyway, now watch here. <clears throat> the Muslim will tell you, Jesus is called the Word of God because God created him by his word. That's the explanation. Are you ready now? Are you ready for how they're going to explain this away? Now I'm going to tell you how they're going to respond and how you refute them. See, one thing about my sessions, what I want to do. Here's what I want to do in my sessions. Not simply give you the argument, but their response and how to refute their response, leaving them speechless with no excuse not to turn to Christ. You see what I'm trying to do? Not only am I going to give you the, the argument, I'm going to give you their objection and then by the power of the Holy Spirit, decimate their objection to leave them silent with no excuse until they repent and give their life to Jesus. That's the goal of my sessions, to make you well-rounded for the glory of the Lord. Now, they'll tell you Jesus was created by the Word of God. That's why he's called God's Word. He's called God's Word because God created him by his command. He said to Jesus, be, and he was. So you understand their argument? Jesus is God's word because God created him by his word. That's it. He's not the actual word. He's not the actual word. He's created by the word of God. That's why he's God's word. Everyone with me there? You understand the response? Because I want to refute it. I want to refute it. Are you now ready for the refutation? But uh, you got to know how to refute it. Say, okay. Okay. You're saying because Jesus was created by God's word, he can be called the word of God. They'll say yes. I go, is it not true? I would say, I'll go, is it not true that according to your Quran, Allah likens Jesus to Adam, whom he created by his word, kun fayakun, chapter 3, verse 59. Chapter 3, verse 59. Let me show you how to respond and refute it. Get ready. Watch you get ready. Lo, the likeness of Jesus with Allah is as the likeness of Adam. He created him from dust. Then he said unto him, be, and he is. So according, according to the Quran, guys, pay attention. According to the Quran, Allah created Adam by his word, right? He said to Adam, be, and he is. So Allah created Adam by his word. God bless you, Steve. Lord bless you and watch over you, right? So Adam was created by the word of God, right? Everyone got that? 359. Allah said to Adam, when he fashioned from dust, be and he is. Okay, now, where then do you find anywhere in the Quran, Adam called the word of Allah? Since Adam was created by the word of Allah, I don't know why this guy isn't blocked already. Why he was able to come in, I have no idea what's up with you guys. Since Adam, since Adam was created by the word of Allah, Shouldn't he have been called the word of Allah? Are you with me there? 
Don't lose focus because my time is almost up. Since Adam was created by the word of Allah, shouldn't he be called the word of Allah? 359 says, Allah said to Adam, be, and he is. But Adam is never called the word of Allah. Adam is never called the word of Allah. Why not? Wasn't Adam created by Allah's word? Yes. So how come he's not called the word of Allah? Not only that, didn't Allah create angels by his word? Yes. Can you show me any angel called the word of God, the word of Allah? No. In fact, isn't it true that you believe Allah created everything by his word? Yes, that means I'm his word. So can you call me the word of Allah? If so, show me in the Quran where it says that because a creature is created by Allah's word, he's the word of Allah. In other words, this is a pathetic objection. Jesus is not called the word of God because God created him by his word. Because Adam was created by God's word and he's still not called the word of God. You get my point? So that explanation won't work. That explanation won't work. Second problem with this. Are you ready for the second problem? I'm going to give you three responses. So make sure you re-listen to these sessions and study the articles. It's all in the, all in the articles. You're thoroughly equipped to destroy Islam, destroy the Quran, take Muslims captive and bring them to the feet of Jesus for their salvation. Second problem is chapter 3, verse 45. Second problem is chapter 3, verse 45. Pay attention now. Don't let the enemy distract you. Chapter 3, verse 45. Watch here. Here's the second problem. And remember when the angel said, O Mary, lo, Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Now, let's focus on that part. I'm going to post it several times. Okay? Here you go. Pay attention. Here it says, Allah has given Mary glad tidings of a word from him whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Let me post it again. The, the Arabic word for word is kalimat. Kalimat, okay? This is a feminine noun. Kalimat, a word from him. Kalimat min hu? The Arabic word for word, pay attention, is kalimat. And we have Arabic speakers who are going to confirm this in a minute. That's a feminine noun. But then notice what it says. It says, this word has a name. This word whose name is ismuhu. Ismuhu, whose name is. Ismuhu is a masculine noun. The word who is masculine. It's a it's a pronoun, a suffix, masculine pronoun. Okay. Are you with me there? Notice that the word kalimat is feminine, but the word whose name, ismuhu, who is a masculine pronoun. The genders don't match. The genders don't match. It should have been ismaha, feminine. But notice, it goes from saying a word, female, whose name, his name shall be. Do you understand what I just said? The word takes on a masculine identity. The word is a male person, a human man. Kalimat is feminine, but the pronoun who is masculine, showing us that this kalimat is actually a male human person, a man named Jesus Christ. You understand what you just learned? The only reason why the genders don't agree, kalimat feminine, and the pronoun should have been ismaha, is because the author of the Quran wants you to know this word becomes a male human being. So that's why the change of the gender, the noun is feminine, but the pronoun who is masculine because it's trying to tell you this word is now a man. This word became a male. This word became a human man. And what's the name of the word? Jesus Christ. Are you following me? Don't let Satan distract you. Lord Jesus rebuked this demon. You understand my point? To make it simple, so I don't confuse you, it's saying the word became a man. 
The word is a man. The word is a male. And the word's name is Jesus. So then how can Jesus not be the word if we're told that the word is a male, is a man whose name is Jesus? The word is a male. The word is Jesus. Not created by the word. He is the word. Who didn't get it? Someone, if someone didn't get it, say, man, I didn't get it. Or you got it. Everyone got it? And the Arabic speakers here, did I lie? Did I misrepresent the Arabic or was I spot on? Those who speak Arabic. You cannot even ask Christian Prince if I'm right. Okay. The third proof that Jesus is the word of God and not simply created by God's word. The third proof that Jesus is the word of God and not simply the byproduct of God's word. And I got to do another session on this. So I got another session. Okay. Everyone who's from the earth returns to the dust. If you're born of Adam, Adam's from dust, you die and you return to the dust, right? You return to the dust, right? Now, if I'm right, Jesus comes from God. Jesus comes from God. He's not from the earth. Then I should expect he'll return from where he came. He'll return to the source. If Jesus is from the earth, then he'll return to the dust. But if he's from God, he'll return to God. And guess what, folks? Chapter 3, verse 55 says... Jesus went to be with God. He didn't return to the earth. Chapter 3, verse 55. And remember when Allah said, O Jesus, Lo, I am gathering thee and causing thee to ascend unto me. Wait. Where is Jesus going to go? To me. He's going to send to me, to Allah, to God. Where I am, he's coming to me. Oh, so Jesus came from you and went back to you. He came down from you and he went up to you. Yes. Chapter 4, verse 158. Chapter 4, verse 158. Chapter 4, verse 158. Nay, Allah raised him, Jesus, up unto himself. Wait. Two verses in the Quran says, Jesus didn't return to the dust like all the prophets, like Muhammad, a false prophet, did. He went up to Allah. But then 4158 says, 4171 says, I'm sorry, same chapter, 4171 says, he came down from Allah. God's word, which came down to Mary. So if he came down from Allah to Mary, that means his origin is Allah, not the earth. No wonder he goes back to Allah and Allah summons him back to himself. Come back to me from where you came, Jesus. You didn't come from the earth. You came from me. You're going to come back to me. But now notice the difference. Jesus came from God as a spirit, entered Mary, and became flesh. And then when he went back, he went back as flesh. He came as spirit, returned as flesh. That's the gospel of John, folks, in the Quran. That's the gospel of John in the Quran. But it gets even better. And then I'm going to open up the Q&A. We got a few minutes for Q&A on my, on my Skype channel. It gets even better. Muslim, where is Allah? They'll say Allah is above the seven heavens, on his throne, or above the throne, above creation. So wait, Allah is above the seven heavens? Yes. Above creation? Yes. Above the throne? Yes. You just put Jesus there. Because Allah said, I'm bringing Jesus to me. Oh, Jesus, I'm causing you to send to me. You're coming to me, Jesus. So where I am, that's where you're going to be. So if Allah is above the seven heavens, on the throne or above the throne, guess where Jesus is? Allah and Jesus are together. Above creation, above the seven heavens. That's the exaltation of Jesus affirmed in the Quran. Wow, Muhammad, your devil really got you to affirm so many things about Jesus that now can be used by the true slaves of God to expose you to be the antichrist you are and get Muslims to see Jesus is the eternal word of the Father who's God in the flesh, reigning with God above creation. Thank you, Muhammad. Much appreciated. Okay.
It's now 420. 420. I'll take about 20 to 30 minutes of Q&A by the grace of the trying God, by the grace of Jesus Christ. You can either text your question or you can call me on Skype. My Skype is open. First and last, give them my Skype name. I'll give it to you. So ask your questions. And don't forget, guys, tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow, God willing. Tomorrow around between 4.30, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 4.30, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mark the calendar. Invite people. Invite people. I want to see more than 200 tomorrow. Between 4.30, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, I'm going to do a full exposition on John 17, 3, the Father, the only true God, in response to Joe's witnesses. And then after that, I join John McRae. What do you mean to refute modalism? All right. Why'd you hang up? Call back, Mr. Amr. Kuwait City. We got a Muslim. Hey, yes. Um, I have a quick question, and that's fine by you. Say it again. I have a quick question. Okay, I'll give like, you a quick answer. Right, I understand that for some reason you might hate Islam, right? I can't hear uh, you. Say it again. Speak clear. Don't, don't be scared. Don't speak like right. a jihadi. No, I'm not jihadi. Don't be worried. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I understand for some reason you might hate the religion, but don't you think that... Um, we have Do you want to me to hang up on you for asking me a stupid question like that? You want to get blocked? No, why? Okay. If I hate the religion, then that means your prophet hated mankind because he called Jews and Christians the worst of animals. And he called us idolaters, unbelievers, and he subjugated us and forced us to pay jizya. So if you're going to go this route, why are you a Muslim? Why don't you condemn Muhammad for preaching hate? No, I'm not Muslim. Oh, okay. So then why do you say hate the religion, man? What hate the religion? Okay, go ahead now. Ask your question. Then. And that, that was it. Thank you. That was it? Yeah, just, just that. I wanted to get something clear. Let me just share something with you. It's okay. not hate to tell someone he's on his way to hell. That's love. If I don't care for you and hate you, go to hell. I don't care. Is it is it hating someone to say, hey, you're dying of cancer, but here is the cure. You take the cure, you'll be cancer free, and you'll live. Or is that love? Okay, so why would you say I'm hate? I don't hate Muslims. I hate anything that will mislead people to hell and rob them of knowing Jesus who loves and adores them. That's love. That's true love. That's not hate. Okay, bro? That, uh, that makes sense. Thank okay, you. You're scaring Shit. me with your face because it looks like you got a bloody mask on. What are you trying to stalk no, me and kill that, me, bro? That's not my face. That's okay. And by the way, you have a Canadian accent, eh? Uh, no, I'm not Canadian. Everybody you have a Canadian, even on this board. <laughs> because you have a Canadian accent, eh? But it's okay, I like you. I thought you were a Muslim saying I hate Muslims. No, I don't. I don't hate Muslims. Yes, I do hate Satan. And yes, I hate the religion of Satan. Any religion that's of Satan, I hate. Is that bad? You want me to love things that Satan produced? So I should love Satan and, and his lies? Or should I hate Satan and hate his lies? And any religion that contradicts the Bible is a lie from Satan. Or should he say that that guy deserves hell? Just that's right, bro. Yeah. The man, baby. You got another question? No, that's it. Thank you're you. You're a good man. Time. I don't care what first and last said about you. You're okay. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Okay. Sorry, guys. I thought the guy was a Muslim saying, you know, why am I preaching hate? Anyone? Any other questions? Any other questions? You can write them out. You can write them out or you can call me. I'm going to take about 15 minutes of Q&A and then we're going to shut down because I need to sleep. And what better way to sleep than hear David Wood bore me to tears, cure my insomnia, take 90% of the time speaking and let his guests just as look at him dumbfound like, why are we here if he's going to do all the talking? No questions? All right, let's see. 424. We got about 20 minutes. Okay, what's the question? Magdalene, you have a question? Nada says you have a question. What is it? Oh, yeah. Magdalene, tomorrow between 
4.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. So I don't know what time that would be in the UK. Can anyone tell me what 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time would be in the UK? Who's good looking, Cloudy? What a hater, bro. He's good looking? Nobody has a question? Nobody going once, going twice? If so, I'll just shut it down, let you guys get ready. Oh, yeah, so that's going to be, I guess they're saying... Magdalene, 9.30 p.m. your time. Is that too late or is that going to be all right? Okay. The best contradiction in the Quran? Wow. You're already anticipating something I was going to do, Hapsa. One of the best contradictions of the Quran is going to tie in directly with Jesus Christ. Are you ready? I'm going to give you just one for the sake of time. All right. Make sure you're there, Magdalene, to listen about John 17.3. All right. Are you ready? She asked me a good question. What would be one of the best contradictions or the best contradiction to use to use to a Muslim from the Quran? This is actually going to tie in, actually going to tie in with Jesus being the Word of God. What did, when Jesus, I have no idea what you're asking me. Do me a favor first last. Quote for us chapter 10, verse 37 of the Quran. Chapter 10, verse 37. Guys, get ready. Good question. Follow with me. I won't have time to go too deep into it because I'm going to do a session on this, God willing. I have an article on this. I'll give it to you before I leave. Just remind me. This Quran could not have been forged apart from God, but it is confirmation of what is before before it and a distinguishing... Oh, my goodness. Pins and needles, needles and pins. First and last, can you quote something besides Arbery? Distinguishing of the book. Does anyone speak like that anymore? You know? You're a jolly old chap. Okay. And this Quran was not forged without Allah, but it confirms what is between his hands and is an exposition of the book. Guys, <clears throat> pins and needles, needles and pins, a happy man's a man that grins. Can you give me either Halali Khan or Yusuf Ali? Pins and needles, needles and pins, a happy man is a man that grins. Yusuf Ali or, okay. <clears throat> the Quran is not such as can be produced by other than Allah. On the contrary, it is a confirmation of what before it and a fuller explanation of the book. See, that's what I was looking for. Even though that's still not completely right. The Halali Khan, from my recollection, captures it best. A full expo exposition of the book. Okay, now we lost everyone here because of choosing the wrong translation. You guys see what the Quran claims, Hafsa? The Quran claims that it is a fuller explanation, a complete explanation of the Bible. Do you see that, Hafsa? Because they're confusing you with all these different translations. All right? They're, who's not getting this? Because I can't answer the question if you guys are not getting it. Okay? Now, chapter 12, verse 111. Chapter 12, verse 111. Watch here. Hafsa, and everyone pay attention. One of the best contradictions in the Quran, and I'll give you a full exposition of it, Lord willing. Okay. In their history, verily, there is a lesson for men of understanding. It is not invented story, but a confirmation of the existing scripture and a detailed explanation of everything, Hafsa. Guys, notice what the Quran claims. The Quran is a detailed explanation of everything. Everything you can imagine, the Quran explains it in detail. Chapter 41, verse 3 of the Quran. Chapter 41, verse 3 of the Quran. Now watch here. Forty-one verse three. A book whereof the verses are explained in detail. Did you catch it? This Quran is a book that explains its verses in detail. Completely explains everything, co explains all its verses. Okay, 16 verse 89. I can give you several more. 16 verse 89. Now watch, guys. Pay attention here. This is a devastating contradiction in the Quran that devastates Muhammad. 1689. And bethink you of the day when we raise in every nation a witness against them of their own folk. And we bring thee, Muhammad, as a witness against these. 
And we reveal the scripture unto thee, an exposition of all things, even though that's not the best translation. But you catch it, right? It explains everything. Completely explains everything. Detailed explanation of everything. Provides detailed explanation of its verses. Everyone caught it? Do you see the repeated claim of the Quran? It is a book that explains the Bible fully. It is a book that explains all of its verses fully. It is a book that explains everything. Everyone got that? Everyone got that? Now let me ask you a question. If the Quran keeps saying, if the Quran keeps saying, this is a clear book for those who speak Arabic, clear Arabic. It explains everything in detail. It explains the Bible fully. It details all of its verses, explains all of its verses in detail. Should there be anything in the Quran confusing in light of all these statements? Should there be anything in the Quran that's confusing, unclear in light of all of these verses, in light of what we just read? No, right? Well, let's go to chapter 3, verse 7. Chapter 3, verse 7. I don't know if you should use Pictal or Arbery, but let's see. Or Yusuf Ali. Let's see. Pictal or Ar it doesn't matter. Let's see. Chapter 3, verse 7. Watch here, folks. Here is the contradiction that is an embarrassment to Muhammad. He it is who revealed unto thee the scripture wherein are clear revelations. They are the substance of the book. Others are allegorical. That's not a good translation, by the way. Find the one that says others are not clear or ambiguous, not allegorical. Ambiguous or unclear. Thank you, Satu. Watch here. Yes, I will, Cloudy. He who has set down un unto you the book, some of its verses are decipher. <laughs> yeah. Those are my other book. Others are ambiguous. Ambiguous. It is he who sent down upon thee the book. Wherein are verses clear that are the essence of the book. Others are ambiguous. As for those whose hearts are swerving, they follow what is ambiguous of it, desiring sedition. Did you guys catch it? They follow the unclear, ambiguous part, desiring dissension, desiring its interpretation. Guys, did you hear it? Chapter 3, verse 7 says, The Quran has verses that are clear and verses that are uh, ambiguous. Unclear, ambiguous, unclear, and those who want to create division focus on the unclear verses, but no one knows what those verses mean except Allah, and those who are sick at heart focus on those verses that are unclear that only Allah knows to cause division. What? Wait, wait, I'm scratching my head. You just kept saying all throughout your Quran, this book explains everything. This book provides detailed explanation of all his verses. This book fully explains the Bible. And all of a sudden, bam, there are some verses that are not clear. Only Allah knows what they mean. Don't be a pervert in heart. Don't focus on those verses to try to find what they mean. Because if you keep focusing on those verses, you're going to create division. Leave them to Allah. Only Allah knows what they mean. Did you catch it? Now, can I ask you guys a question? Can I ask you a question? Why in the world would Allah send down verses in the Quran that no one knows what they mean except him? What purpose does that serve? Why are you sending the... Okay, you want me to understand your book, right? Yeah. But you just said you sent verses that no one can understand. Yes. How does that benefit me? How does it help me that you included verses that no one knows what they mean except you. How does it help me that there are verses that are unclear and I'm not to focus on them because only you know their meaning? Why did you send those verses? I've said, you see the problem? Who doesn't see the problem here? But you guys don't know why this was revealed. Now, let me get you an article, and I'm going to do a session on this. Here's the article. Here's the article. Here it is. 
I'm going to do a session on this and let me get you another article. Before I shut down, we got about six minutes. I'm going to get you another article on this. Hold on. Here you go. Here's the other article, guys. You know why this was revealed? Now, thou shalt not pontificate first, last. All of you guys know this already because you've heard this, you've studied this, you've used this. Hafsa, do you know why chapter 3, verse 7 was written? And those two links, click on them, read them. I quote you the Muslims to prove this, and I'm going to do a session on this. Do you know why Muhammad wrote chapter 3, verse 7? You guys ready to get shocked? You guys want to laugh? Maybe tomorrow, Netta, Lord willing. You guys ready to, to laugh? You ready to get shocked? Muhammad composed chapter 3, verse 7, because the Christians were saying to Muhammad, Muhammad, yes, because there's a group of Christians from Najran that went to Muhammad to debate him. And they said, Muhammad, yes, Jesus is the word of Allah. Yes, he's the spirit of Allah. Yes, that's what the Quran says. Yes, you just proved he's God. And Muhammad said, oh, wait, those verses are unclear. No one knows what they mean except Allah. So don't focus on those verses. That's why he wrote chapter 3, verse 7. I don't know if you caught it. Christians were using the verses I used. To show, wait, Muhammad, you're saying in the Quran, Jesus is the word of Allah? Yes. The spirit of Allah? Yes. He created a bird from clay, breathed into it, it came to life? Yes. He raised the dead, gave life to the dead? Yes. You just proved he's God. What else do you want? Oh, Allah sent down the Quran with clear verses, unclear verses. Those verses I forgot to tell you. They're unclear. Only Allah knows what they mean. Don't focus on them. That's Islam. That's Islam. The real miracle is that people think Islam is a miracle. But now, here's what you do. Yeah, Christos and Estes, if you get those links, and we're going to do a session on it. Guys, when you hear the depth, the beauty, the majesty of the Bible, and you read how beautiful Jesus is, how amazing Jesus is, how glorious and real and amazing and mind-blowing the Father, Son, Holy Spirit happen to be. And then you compare it to Islam. Aren't you thankful that you know the true God and the true God knows you? And aren't you thankful that the true God has given you eyes to see and ears to hear? And aren't you thankful that God in his love for his church and in his love for his people raised up men and women by the power of the Holy Spirit to be men and women of integrity, to be used of the Spirit, to bless you, to fall more in love with Jesus who's alive, who's real? Aren't you thankful? So right now, when you get a chance tonight, get on your knees and just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I ask one thing of you. Give me your grace and power to never shame you, to never disgrace you, to never break your heart, to never fail you, but to love you and adore you till I die because you are worthy. And I know I will be with you forever because you are alive. And then pray for me. Pray for my daughters. Pray for David Wood. Pray for all of us. Because you know Satan wants to attack us and take us out. But by the blood of Jesus and his church praying, we are more than conquerors in Christ who loved us. So guys, thank you. Christ is risen. He's alive. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Look for me between. My time will be 1.32 p.m. my time. That is 4.35 p.m. New York time, Eastern Standard Time. And then I go live with John. What do you mean, McRae? We love you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Luisa, that's why Jesus saved you. You could not save yourself, and you're not worthy enough to stand before his presence. But Jesus says, I will make you worthy, Luisa. I will humble myself and become man to identify with you, and I will do for you what you could not do for yourself because I'm in love with you. I love you. I adore you, and I will make you worthy to stand before my Father, before me and the Holy Spirit forever and ever, because Luisa and every one of you, 
Netta, Anna, Hepsa, first last Protestant, thou shalt not pontificate, Magdalene, Jesus is saying, I love you, I'm in love with you, and I will never let you go. And I know your love with me, Jesus, and my daughters, never let us go. Maranatha, may the Lord come sooner than later. Take care. See you tomorrow.